Over the centuries, Christianity has twisted the scriptures, changing words and adding new doctrines that weren't there in the original Greek and Hebrew. This causes mass confusion, clouding the people in a fog of ignorance. The adversary, or Satan, doesn't want the truth being spread, hence why he founded the religion of Christianity, to bury the truth with lies and half-truths. One of these truths that's been buried for centuries is right division. The cutting of the word into two separate evangels with two separate audiences. Paul's 13 letters are separate from the rest of the New Testament, written by the Apostle Paul carrying the evangel of the untraceable riches of God's grace to the nations. Given by the risen Christ Jesus himself, Paul's evangel talks of no flesh being justified by the works of law, but by the faith of Christ Jesus, being set free from the slavery of the law, baptized with the Holy Spirit and given God's righteousness, being holy and flawless in God's sight. This is a secret not known by many, for this hidden truth has been buried under religious dogmas for centuries. The true power of the cross is revealed to us in Paul's letters. Jesus was made sin by his Father, the only one true God. He took on all sin for all of creation. He then died, and with him the whole creation died with him. Jesus didn't exist for three whole days. He was dead, and so was sin. He was entombed, then was roused by his God and Father three days later, leaving sin in the grave. All of creation has been made right from sin, and in time all of creation will see salvation. All of creation will have God's righteousness. Right now it's just the believers that have God's righteousness, but all will have God's righteousness in God's own time. Does this mean that we should reject all of Scripture, minus Paul's 13 letters? No, of course not. All of Scripture is inspired by God. 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 All Scripture is inspired by God and is beneficial for teaching, for exposure, for correction, for discipline and righteousness, that the man of God may be equipped, fitted out for every good act. But if you don't correctly cut the word, if you don't differentiate between the two separate evangels, you'll be lost in a fog of confusion, not understanding anything, and spreading lies. This is what happened to the religion of Christianity. 2 Timothy 2.15 Endeavour to present yourself to God, qualified and an unashamed worker, correctly cutting the word of truth. Paul writes to the chosen predestined believers who have been given the faith to believe this good news. Most are from the nations, but some, like Paul himself, are Jews. Believers of the body of Christ come from all over the earth, from all walks of life. Baptized and sealed by the Holy Spirit, they cannot lose their salvation. You can't lose it or earn it. Salvation isn't dependent on their acts or their faith, but by the faith of Christ and his one complete finished work on the cross. Ephesians 2, 8-9 For in grace through faith are you saved, and this is not out of you. It is God's approach, present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting. Galatians 2, 16 Having perceived that a man is not being justified by works of law, except alone through the faith of Christ Jesus. We also believe in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by works of law. Seeing that by works of law shall no flesh at all be justified. Galatians 3.11 Now that in law no one is being justified with God is evident, for the just one by faith shall be living. Romans 3.20 Because by works of law no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight, for through law is the recognition of sin. Romans 3.21 Yet now, apart from law, a righteousness of God is being manifest, being attested by the law and the prophets. Romans 3.22 Yet a righteousness of God for Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing, for there is no distinction. Paul's evangel of the death, entombment and resurrection of Christ for all sin, justification by the faith of Christ and salvation by the grace of God, reveals to us the true heart of God. It reveals his unconditional love for us. This is contrary to the other evangel in scripture, the kingdom evangel given to Peter and the other apostles by Jesus Christ when he was here on earth. When he was a mortal man, not the risen glorified Christ Jesus that he is right now. 
The circumcision believers are justified by their good works in addition to their own faith. This is relative, of course, and their evangel is temporary. In time, all will come to understand the evangel of God's grace given to Paul. Paul's evangel is permanent because it reveals the true heart of God. Peter's evangel is temporary. It shows that God's love is conditional, depending on whether you show forth good works. Its condition is dependent on if you can persevere or not, just like during the tribulation. The believers, according to Paul's evangel, the body of Christ, will not be in the tribulation, but the circumcision believers of Peter's evangel will be. This is why they have to persevere through the tribulation. They will be given strength by God to do so. This is why it says many are called, but few are chosen. That's not talking about the body of Christ believers. That's talking about the circumcision believers, the bride of the lambkin. Here Paul tells us he has been entrusted with the evangel of the uncircumcision and Peter the evangel of the circumcision. Galatians 2, 7. But on the contrary, perceiving that I have been entrusted with the evangel of the uncircumcision, Galatians 2, 8. According as Peter of the circumcision, for he who operates in Peter for the apostleship of the circumcision operates in me also for the nations. Galatians 2, 9. And knowing the grace which has been given to me, James and Cephas and John, who are supposed to be pillars, give to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we indeed are to be for the nations, yet they for the circumcision. The kingdom evangel given to Peter concerns the thousand year reign with Christ here on earth, after Christ's return at the end of the seven year tribulation. The chosen circumcision believers, along with those who have perished, who will be resurrected, along with the apostles, will rule on earth a thousand years. This is totally separate from Paul's evangel. His message is for the believers of the uncircumcision, or the body of Christ. They will rule and reign with Christ in the celestials, not on earth. God's focus now, presently, is on forming the body of Christ through Paul's letters, not on Israel's kingdom evangel. That evangel is being held on hold. It's been deactivated till the fullness of the nations should be coming in, or, in other words, till the body of Christ is complete. Every member comes into a realization of who they are in Christ. Thereupon the snatching away will occur, or the rapture. The tribulation will follow, and immediately after the snatching away, or rapture, God's focus will now be on Israel. The kingdom evangel will now take center stage. After the stoning of Stephen in the book of Acts, God's focus shifted onto the nations, from Israel onto the nations, to form the body of Christ. The Jews rejected their Messiah again after stoning Stephen. Here's a list of the New Testament that's written to Israel or the circumcision believers. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four main accounts. Acts, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude and Revelation. Here's Paul's 13 letters written to the nations. Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Let's compare James, that's written to the circumcision believers, to the letters of Paul. If they are supposedly a part of the same evangel, as Christianity says, they must perfectly match up, right? So let's go into James then. James 2.14 What is the benefit, my brethren, if anyone should be saying that he has faith, yet may have no works, that faith cannot save him, James 2.26 For even as the body apart from the spirit, apart from spirit, is dead, thus also faith apart from works is dead. So here James is saying that faith without works is dead, putting a requirement on works, on your own performance. Let's compare that to Paul and let's see what he says. Romans 3.20 Because by works of law no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight, for through law is the recognition of sin. Romans 3.27 Where then is boasting? It is debarred. Through what law? Of works? No, but through faith's law. Romans 3.28 For we are reckoning a man to be justified by faith apart from works of law. Galatians 2.16 Having perceived that a man is not being justified by works of law, except alone through the faith of Christ Jesus. 
We also believe in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of law, seeing that by works of law shall no flesh at all be justified. So what is it then? Are, are we justified by the faith of Jesus or do I have to show forth my own works? Do I have to perform? What is it? If Paul and James are part of the same evangel, then the written word of God directly contradicts itself. This is the doing of Satan, using the Christian religion to mix the two evangels, confusing everyone and burying the secrets of Paul's evangel under religious dogmas. Scripture cannot contradict itself, as we see in 2 Timothy 3.16, as evidence that scripture is inerrant. All scripture is inspired by God, therefore there can't be any contradictions. God doesn't make mistakes. I wonder who would have a motivation so nefarious as to make out God to be incompetent and his written word full of contradictions. Oh that's right, this guy. Peter wrote about Paul in the scriptures only once. Peter affirms that the Lord has given him wisdom, but he finds it hard to understand and comprehend. This is because Peter is not a member of the body of Christ. He hasn't been chosen since before the disruption of the world to, to be a part of Christ's body. That's a role given to the believers of Paul's evangel. Peter's role will be on the earth, not on the celestials. He will sit on one of the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This takes place during the thousand year kingdom on earth, or the millennial kingdom. Paul will be ruling and reigning with Christ Jesus himself in the celestials. Now that's quite the difference. So this has been a brief introduction into the two separate evangels. I'll go more in depth in future videos. Peace out guys.